This is a patient we're treating today with venous insufficiency and varicose veins. And based on the ultrasound that we did earlier, we determined that she has very dilated uh, varicose veins and saphenous vein on the inner aspect of the thigh. So today we're doing what's called a radiofrequency ablation procedure, where we're gonna put a heating element inside this dilated greater saphenous vein, which is not functioning because of dilated valves that are not propelling blood back up the leg normally. So essentially the vein is not functional and when she stands a lot of pooling is occurring in the lower aspect with leg symptoms such as achiness and throbbing. So we're going to shut down that vein with what's called a closure fast procedure or radiofrequency ablation. So what we see here is a dilated greater saphenous vein. I'm kind of compressing that with the ultrasound. And within this whole vein are incompetent valves. You're not going to be able to see the valves with this view on the ultrasound, but it is an abnormally dilated vein, which is incompetent. And not all the valves are incompetent. Uh, our ultrasound technicians look at each set of valves and determine which ones are incompetent. And at some point, there will be competent valves, and I would guess this vein down towards the calf has a competent system. So we want to target the incompetent vein, which is dilated with the incompetent valves, and that looks like a good area to start entry into the vein for the ablation procedure. So what we're going to do is just locally numb up the skin a little bit here with some Novocaine. And give that a little second. And then we're going to get an access needle to gain entry into the vein, which we did. And then we're going to thread a little tiny wire. Go ahead and bring it up there. It's kind of important not to move that needle. You want to pop it out of the vein. And we're going to give her a little bit more local here so she doesn't feel any more discomfort at the entry site. And we make just a tiny little nick in the skin because we're going to put in an access sheath. And what it is, you'll see in a second, it's a little tube that we gain access into the vein with. And then we work through this tube, which has a little valve on the end. And the ablation catheter goes through that. OK, hon, you're going to feel just a little bit of pressure going into the vein there. There we go. So what we do is we just uh, insert the radiofrequency catheter through this little valve and it protects from any back bleeding into the area. And this is the ablation catheter. It, this is the heating element here, which is the copper colored material. And what we do is just insert it through the valve all the way up and then we image we image the area that we want to go to close to the groin level. So what you see on the screen here is a dot that's moving there. That's the catheter. And there's like a black line, which we call a little posterior shadow. That's around the area where we want to position this catheter. To the left, where you see me pressing there, that's the deep vein structure. We definitely want to stay away from there. So we kind of position the uh, ablation catheter a safe distance away from the deep vein. And then we start numbing up this area with a tumescent solution, which is basically a lidocaine or novocaine mixture with a little bit of epinephrine and saline. So it protects the tissues and the nerves around the vein from the heat ablation. And here you see that fluid going in, that tumescent solution or the numbing solution around the vein to coat the vein so you don't have any discomfort during the procedure. The patient's not feeling the heat. These catheters work by generating quite a bit of heat, almost 300 degrees Fahrenheit of heat 
to close the vein. So again, that black fluid is the numbing solution around that white dot, which is the catheter. I'm just trying to get a bunch of fluid in the tissue so there's no discomfort during the procedure. This particular segment of vein is a little close to the skin, so we like to get the tumescent anesthesia solution on top of it to separate the vein from the skin so there's no discomfort over the skin after the procedure. You see the fluid nicely going in and moving that vein downwards a little bit. So what we have here is we have the radiofrequency ablation catheter going through the entry sheath and the catheter is positioned up at the groin level and what we're going to do is to heat little segments of the dilated incompetent saphenous vein all the way down to the level of the knee. So we put the patient's head down and elevated the leg to empty the leg veins, uh, which are dilated because we want them to collapse a little bit to have contact with the catheter. So we're going to go ahead and start the procedure after we've numbed her up and hopefully won't, she won't be feeling any discomfort during the procedure. So here you see our uh, machine here connected to the catheter, which is generating 100 degree, 120 degrees Celsius temperatures at the tip of the heating element, which is essentially damaging the internal layer of the vein with the heat source. And when we get done with this procedure, the vein itself will be clotted off and closed. And then when we take another ultrasound of this over time, let's say three months, six months, one year, by that one year mark, the vein won't even be identifiable. It will shrink to a little fibrotic cord-like structure and be completely closed. Is that two? Go ahead. So what we're doing is we're burning the vein segments in 20 second intervals and we're just advancing the catheter back towards the entry site uh, between the hashes. We're just pulling it back about five centimeters. So this is our last segment where we're ablating the dilated saphenous vein here. And we'll go ahead and take the catheter out. Thank you. And there you see the heating element. That was the, uh, the heat source where we're just pulling it back station by station at 20 second intervals until we completely close that saphenous vein. So right now what we're gonna do is put a compression dressing on the patient. She'll have some post-operative instructions. We'll do a follow-up ultrasound to make sure the vein is closed and uh, evaluate the patient in uh, about three days.